Hey guys, be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram for extra content you won't see here. Click the links in the description below. Hey, what's up guys? Ebra and I for back again with another action figure review. Today we are going to look at the Marvel Legends 10th anniversary Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket 2 pack. This is the Marvel Studios first 10 years. They're calling it 10th anniversary, but it's officially named the first 10 years. This is Hasbro paying tribute to the first 10 years of the Marvel movies. So we're going to get a lot of figures that we've haven't gotten before, some that we've have, but uh, a lot that we have not gotten in one includes this yellow jacket which they skipped out on when the first movie came out so this is pretty cool i like this and then the box art is also good uh, it makes me not want to take it out the box so a lot of mock collectors mint on card collectors are in, are gonna love this a lot now also there are a lot of people that don't like uh, collecting the mcu movie figures so a lot of people might pass up on these uh, so that's also uh, uh, an issue there too. But uh, for those of you that do like collecting these, and this is uh, going to be a special treat for you guys, uh, a lot of figures are coming out for this series of first 10 years, and they keep uh, uh, announcing more, it, it seems like. So uh, they just announced a 3-pack with Thanos in it, the Infinity War 3-pack, uh, and it seems to be coming out pretty soon. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the box. We got uh, the figures displayed there through the window package, and we got the Ant-Man logo, Ant-Man the movie logo from the first movie on the uh, bottom corner and then of course Marvel Studios with the number 10 in there now this is going to be a little difficult to show but the side of the box shows uh, a piece of a uh, concept art or pieces of concept art that you can combine once you collect the other figures the box is going to be displayed side by side and it'll make one huge picture so that's also another cool feature for any uh, mountain card collectors too uh, an option to display them on the spine or on the side um, you can see the picture and then on the other side it's just a read up in multiple languages right there so here's a closer look at it we've got the year the movie came out we got ant-man and then if you wish to read it you can pause the video real quick right now and here's a, a closer look at that the other side with the um with the artwork So on the back side, we have different read-ups than the ones on the side. We have a little poster of the movie on the right side here. We have a number 8 here. I'm assuming that's the number of the pack. Uh, this is the 8th uh, pack, maybe, of the set of first 10 years. Uh, but the read-up for Ant-Man says, Scott Lang is enlisted by Hank Pym to suit up as Ant-Man and fight against competing forces intending to use the incredible shrinking Pym particles for evil. For Yellow Jacket, we have the new lead of Pym Industries, Darren Cross, threatens to sell his highly weaponized Yellow Jacket suit to the criminal organization Hydra. Alright, that's enough with the box. Let's go to get these figures out the box and see how they look. Right off the bat, obviously, Yellow Jacket's going to be the star of the pack. It's obviously what everyone's going to go after because we've gotten Ant-Man from Ant-Man 1 before, although this one's slightly different. They did give us the updated suit here in Ant-Man 1. Um... He used the open mouth uh, helmet, and I think towards the end of the movie, they changed it. Uh, and now you can't see his mouth at all. The first time they released this figure, it was the open mouth Ant-Man. Alright, so we'll go ahead and start off with Ant-Man, since we have gotten him before. And yes, it is using the same body mold as the original release, but they, they changed it slightly. There's some slight differences and I'll go ahead and throw in the, the first release here. It's from the first movie. And like I was mentioning, there's the face mask. The open mouth was their first release. And they never released the closed mouth one until uh, they made the new Ant-Man and the Wasp version. So, uh, but it is using the same body mode. Now, this new figure has more texture on the red here. They actually added texture, which the first release, they did not have texture. They just had a smooth surface on the red. There you can kind of see the texture on there, what I'm talking about. You get the other one in there, it's smooth. It's not the biggest difference in the world. And also the red, it's darker on the old one. You can see um, just the color differences there. It's a much more silver. There's more wash on the old one, on that little uh, wristband there. It's like orange colored while it's red right there and then it's not colored there. The black is much darker on the new one here than this one. You can see the darkness difference. But overall they did add that that wash, that black wash on the silver there which was nice for the, uh, for the original release. And then of course we have the new uh, helmet. So that's the main difference in the figure. Everything else is the same uh, aside from the paint. 
I'm leaning more towards the wash because I like when they wash, you know, black wash the figures. And that looks good there. And they could have done it on this one. You can see how the difference is there. Now this new version does come with the Paul Rudd head. And it's a different head. It's not the same one that we got from the Ant-Man and the Wasp, which a lot of people complained uh, was very big. I did say the jaw was really, really big. It did have a smirk on his face. This one just has a neutral face. And that is what he looks like with the other head on, the unmasked head. I can't say it looks 100% like the actor, but uh, it's not it's not bad either. So the head's gonna articulate left and right. It is on a ball jointed hinge, so it's gonna look up on the hinge. It's gonna look down too. And the arms are gonna go forward and back. They're gonna go in and out like this. It does make that, that crunchy noise. But it's fine. There is a bicep swivel. There's a double jointed elbow swivel at the wrist with a hinge at the wrist. Very stiff on this one, but it does does hinge. We have an ab crunch. We have a waist swivel. T jointed legs go forward and back. They're gonna go in and out this far. We have a thigh swivel, double jointed knees here, an ankle that hinges forward and back, and it pivots. And that's what you get. And along with our Ant Man figure, we're gonna have a miniature version of him here. It's just a, um, it's probably not going to stand on its own, not not really, but at least we do get it. The size difference there by his head. So a little mini version of Ant-Man. Alright, and now we'll take a look at the star of the show. We have the new, all new mold, all new figure, Yellow Jacket, and I think he looks great. I think they really, really did a good job on this. I'm really liking uh, the figure a lot, and I do like uh, how they uh, added these pieces here. His little stingers. I think that looks nice. And it is removable in case you guys are curious. It's just on his back on a peg hole. And there's a closer look at the helmet. There is no alternate head for Cross. Would have been cool though. But no alternate head. And then there's a look at the texture on there. Very cool honeycomb design. Goes down. Pretty cool. So we'll take a look at his pack here. Same deal with the nice, nice sculpt and paint, the yellow paint there. And it's nicely articulated too. I like how they articulated it. We do have uh, the top pieces here. They're on a hinge. So they do hinge forward and back like that. And they do swivel up there. We got a hinge down here too. So you can uh, bend it out like this or down. Uh, so, and of course this would be on his back right now. So that means you can, uh, you know, put it up or to the side, all the way up this high, right there. So from there, we have a hinge right here as well, so it can hinge here. Go back. Uh, we got another hinge down here, so very nice. And then I think that is it. Doesn't hinge at the tip. No, that's that's it. We do get a swivel here too. So there's a hinge and a swivel, and that goes for both uh, little arms here. As for the figure's articulation, it's going to have all the uh, points that you would ever want in a Marvel Legend. Uh, we have a head that swivels left and right. It's going to look up. It is on a bar jointed hinge, so it's got a good good bend. We can even get a little bit of a head tilt in there. And then we got the arms going forward and back. They're going to go in and out. There's a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows here. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge. There's an ab crunch here. Waist swivel. T jointed legs are going to go forward and back. They're going to go in and out to see how far. Not far at all. Not that far. Uh, we don't really have a thigh swivel here, but it is down here. So uh, it's not an upper thigh swivel, I guess. So this is kind of weird. We're not really used to seeing a lower thigh swivel. It's almost like a mid thigh swivel, but it is there. We do have it. So it's down there. And we do get a double jointed knee. We have the ankles that hinge forward and back. They're going to pivot and they did add a ankle swivel up there. It's like a ball jointed hinge for the um, for the ankles there, which they did not include on this mold for uh, Ant-Man. Even though I know it's the old mold, so they didn't update it or anything like that. But they did add that swivel for a yellow jacket. And we also do get the miniature version of yellow jacket. And I think it looks okay for how small it is. You know, the paint's not going to look... Perfect. I mean, look at the difference in the torso and, and there's not even any yellow on the legs there. So, you know, it is what it is. It's not really going to be a huge deal, but there you have them both. They're all, of course, they're not articulated or anything like that. 
uh, but they can battle out as miniature versions. All right, and there you can kind of get an idea of what you can do with his uh, his stingers back here. I put them all the way up so you can have them over his shoulders too, or you can hinge it back down. And the way it was in the pack was they're down here. So you can do that. You can do this way. So I like the articulation overall on the on the stingers back here. I think they, they did a good job with it. It's very nice. It's not lazy. It's not... Uh, they could have go ahead and just had it molded where you don't articulate it, but they, at least they did articulate that. Do I am happy with, with that right there. Here's some size comparison next to some random figures. We got the uh, comic versions of these characters next to some movie versions. We got Carnage from the new Venom wave and then the Iron Man from the Black Panther wave. Let's get some movie figures in here. We have the uh, Infinity War uh, Thor. It's taller than both of them there. I think they they did the size with Yellow Jacket perfectly because he is taller than that, man. Uh, that guy was pretty tall in the movie, so uh, I think they did a good job there. And there's the Dwight Stahl lookalike Captain America from Infinity War. Alright guys, and that's going to do it for my review of the Marvel Legends Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket 2-pack from the first 10 years, 10th anniversary series of MCU figures. This is pretty cool. I actually wish they would have implemented a Build-A-Figure aspect to it. I don't know, that would have been cool if we would have uh, built maybe the Destroyer from uh, the first uh, Thor or, or maybe a Frost Giant, something like that, unless they're going to give us those uh, later on. But I'm hoping for a lot from this series of figures. So so far, they have announced a lot of good ones. Um, I'm loving the, the fact that we're getting a remake of the Mark I Iron Man that it was much needed because their first uh, release of those figures was just horrible. I'm pretty happy that we're getting a Ronin, the Accuser. That's awesome too. But there's also a lot that we never gotten and we still have not gotten. And it doesn't look like we're going to get it unless they announce it. Uh, like Heimdall. Heimdall's another one that uh, a lot of people have been requesting Heimdall and uh, we've yet to hear or, or, or see anything of that nature for, for a figure. But hopefully if this does successful enough, I'm sure they will keep it going. And uh, there's plenty of characters that they missed out. I'm crossing my fingers for a Iron Man 2 Whiplash. That would be amazing uh, with the tattoos and everything. I'm hoping they could pull that off. But um, I seriously, I'd pay probably 30 bucks if they could do it perfectly. But I have high hopes for this series of figures, and uh, I think it's cool. Yellow Jacket's seriously uh, the star of this two-pack. You're definitely going to want to pick it up for Yellow Jacket. You movie fans don't want to pass that up. So, hope you guys enjoyed the review. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And as always, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.